So today my school just closed because of the coronavirus. So I'm, I'm stuck here at home with nothing better to do than making YouTube videos. While I'm waiting for my online classes to get started, I thought maybe I could work on something cool for once. Today, we're going to try and better understand how the coronavirus became such a global pandemic in just three to four months using the power of coding and artificial intelligence. I actually started working on this project around two weeks ago at a recent hackathon called Mary Hacks. Basically, I built this web app with a friend that could let its users visualize the spread of the COVID-19 over the world on a map from January to today. The app could give advice to its users depending on how infected a region was. And during the hackathon, I also implemented a linear regression model to forecast the spread of the disease a week in advance, but it isn't really reliable since the growth of a virus is exponential, not linear. So later on in this video, I'll be showing you how I improved this machine learning model to provide more accurate and interesting insights on this global pandemic. I don't want to make this video too technical, but I still want to give you guys a good overview of all the interesting functionalities that I had to implement to make this website work. Whenever you build a relatively complex website or an app, you can split its development into two parts, building the front end and building the back end. Basically, front end refers to the client side or the web design, whereas back end refers to the server side. So anything the user can't see in a browser such as databases where information is stored, is referred as the backend. So in the case of this project, the front end was built using plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which are the most commonly used languages for web development. My friend and I wanted to take a minimalistic approach and keep things as simple and condensed as possible. We also knew that there were already a few websites that were mapping the coronavirus out there, but we saw that there were a few functionalities that were missing in them. Specifically, the ability to see the number of cases of COVID-19 at a given time and the ability to zoom in to a given region, such as the island of Montreal. The back end is where things get interesting. We used the John Hopkins University Center for Systems Science and Engineering data repository, available publicly to obtain the number of cases in all regions across the world on a daily basis of COVID-19. However, we needed to first manipulate the data to be displayed on a map. So the original files were in a CSV format, which are um, basically like an Excel sheet with each row representing a country or region. So we needed to convert this into a GeoJSON format, which is an open standard designed for representing simple geographical features, along with non-spatial attributes, which is in our case, it's the number of people affected. So the result is a GeoJSON file for each day, each GeoJSON file describing all the points in the world where there have been coronavirus cases, as well as the number of cases for that given point. This data set was then uploaded onto a Google Cloud storage bucket, which allows us basically to easily store data on the cloud. And finally, the bridge between the front end and the back end is the Google Maps API, which displays the data set onto a Google Maps. Now, for those of you who don't know what an API is, an API is just something that sends information back and forth between two parties, usually between a website or an app and a user. And in the case of the Google Maps API, the developer can request a customized Google map with its own content and imagery, and the Google Maps API gives back a map that can be displayed on web pages and mobile devices. So now, let's look at the final results. So as you can see in the demo, the sizes of the circles are proportional to the number of people infected and there's also geolocation functionality implemented. Overall, the user interface isn't perfect, but hey, that's what you get when you give two high schoolers 24 hours to build this shit. Alright, so that was all we could do during the hackathon, but I've actually worked on it since and I'm very excited to make it available publicly. If you want to make any contributions, hit me up. Now, not only can you see the number of people infected, but you can also see the number of people recovering and dying from the coronavirus simply by hovering over a data point. You can check it out live using this link. That's all for today. In the next video, if school stays closed and I have enough time, I'll continue working on the AI project to fight COVID-19 
and made me make a video about it. Peace out.